What's up guys, it's Sarah, and um, today we're going to be celebrating May the 4th be with you with a Star Wars video. Um, I was trying to decide what Star Wars video to make, and um, I decided to make an analysis of the new Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer. Now, uh, this, this one came out, um, I think, a week or two ago. Today we're going to be breaking down the trailer shot by shot and asking the questions that everybody wants to know. Hmm, is there going to be a gray Jedi? Is the Jedi going to end? Okay, we'll get to all those. So the first shot of the film is, you know, Rey's hand slamming on the rock and her coming up and being all out of breath and stuff. And of course, this is an, almost an exact mirror to the Force Awakens trailer whenever um, Finn came up and was, was all out of breath and nobody knew what was going on. It definitely starts it out with some tension, you know, so that was an interesting shot there. And these islands are located off the coast of Ireland and they're called the Skellig Islands. And um, from the 6th to about the 12th century, they were inhabited by Christian monks. And they like built, you know, little stairs and walkways and there's even a graveyard there. So I think the scouts, the, lo the uh, location scouts definitely picked a good one. Um, also, um, there, is a, there is the Force theme song that comes in, and this is one of my favorite theme songs in the whole Star Wars universe. So uh, that, you know, starts to come in, starts to have you think about the Force. Okay, so the third shot is um, whenever Rey is floating some rocks and you're, you only get a very close shot of her hand, but you're wondering, you know, is this movie going to be like the Empire Strikes Back where um, the, the upcoming Jedi gets trained, you know? Um, I don't know. We'll have to just wait and see. Okay, coming up next, we have a shot of General Leia. And you see her from behind, and you see her looking at like a um, some kind of map or whatever. And we assume she's on the deck of some kind of starship. So that's pretty interesting. I think they showed some restraint and didn't show her face because they didn't want to take advantage of her death and everything. But um, I definitely think that uh, it, it kind of makes you wonder what's going on here. And you can definitely hear um, Ray's theme song, like come in at this point and I actually like her her song so that's that's pretty cool but what I didn't realize until re-watching it several times was that in the background really faintly you can hear Leia's line from the original Star Wars where she says help me Obi-Wan Kenobi you're my only hope and you hear it really, really faintly and it's like ooh you know kind of gives you chills So the next shot has a broken mask on the floor, and at first you're like, oh, is that Darth Vader's mask, the one from the previous movie? But if you look closely, it's Kylo Ren's mask. So you gotta wonder, you know, did he destroy it on purpose in a fit of rage, which I think is more, is more, um, more likely. Or, you know, did it get stolen from him, and did it get, um, destroyed there? So, we'll have to wait and see. And also during this part, you hear the Kylo Ren theme song. And I really do like the new composition on that. Um, as well as, I had to rewatch this several times to hear this, but there's a faint hint of um, the line from the original Star Wars where Obi-Wan says um, to um, Luke that Anakin Skywalker was seduced by the dark side. Darkness. So you kind of have to listen for it. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. In addition, you can also hear Darth, Darth Vader's famous breathing sound. So it definitely like sets, sets the mood there. So the next shot is my favorite shot of the whole trailer because it gives me hope that my questions might be answered in this film. Um, it has a, like a cave, you know, with a light, a, a beam of sunlight shining on a book. And you see a gloved hand come up to it and looks at, at the book and it looks really old and ancient. And it's probably Luke's hand, but since it has a glove, you can't really tell whose hand it is. Might be like a flashback or who knows, you know. But um, it just, it gives me hope that they're going to answer the questions like, how did the Jedi get started? What happened to them? Do they have evil beginnings or did they, you know, start as a cult or what, what happened? You know, why are they the way that they are? 
Um, is there anything about the Jedi that we don't already know? So this is really interesting and really makes you think. So in, th in this part, there is a, a little secret hint of something, but it's really hard to hear, so you have to turn it up really, really loud. But basically, there is a scene in um, The Empire Strikes Back where Yoda is telling Luke of all about the Force. And he says, you know, it surrounds us and um, it binds us. And this is what you can hear really, really super faintly in, in the background of this scene. Also, there's a scene with Rey where she's running with the lightsaber and she looks so fierce, you know, she looks like really hardcore and she has like a, like, a, like a concentrated look on her face. And you wonder, like, is she running to attack someone or is she running to protect someone? You know, what's going on there? So I do think it's cool that there is a female protagonist that is going to be the next Jedi or the next big character that at least uses a lightsaber. I think it's going to be really, really cool. Okay, so in the next shot, you see these ships and they're going, th they're like driving on this island. And why well, shouldn't she drive? <laughs> they're flying on this island and um, they're dragging something and they're making all this red dust come up, you know, and you're like, what are they doing? And you, you know, I don't really know for sure, we're going to have to find out, but you can definitely tell that they're, um, they're like the rebels. And you can see really faint in the distance that there's going to be Imperial walkers. And, and, and that's going to be really, really cool because they're always like a cool, you know, thing to, to have like as an enemy. So I really, I really like that shot and definitely the, uh, Red um, dust is something that we have never seen before. Okay, so we get a really quick glimpse of Finn, and he is in hypersleep. He looks like to be some sort of medical pod. And you wonder, um, you obviously, if you didn't remember, he got hurt really bad in the battle with Kylo Ren. So, obviously, he's still alive, but it looked like whenever he was in the medical pod that he was on the move. So, I don't know if wherever he was at was being attacked, Maybe they sent him out somewhere, or I don't know what's going on with him. So, I hope that he heals up and is able to be in at least half of this film. So, we'll have to wait and see. Um, next, you see a really quick shot of Poe running in, down like a corridor and with, uh, with BB-8. And he's going towards his X-Wing fighter. And there's a huge explosion in the hangar. And um, they wonder, you know, did his, did his X-Wing fighter get completely blown up, or was it just on fire? So, you know, obviously there's going to be some kind of battle taking place. And uh, I hope he's able to fly. Quick side note, um, he's my second favorite character in these new films. I love, the, I love the actor Oscar Isaac. I think he does a great job playing him. And I kind of wonder, since he's such a great pilot, does he have the Force? We'll have to wait and see. So next up, we get a little glimpse of the Millennium Falcon, and it's trying to outrun um, a TIE fighter or two and like a dogfight. So, you know, you got to wonder who is piloting this. Is it just Chewbacca by himself? Does Chewbacca have a co-pilot, you know? Um, is it Rey? Is, she, is, this, is this like, you know, later in the film when she's off the island? I have no idea, so we'll have to wait and see for that one. It would be cool if Lando came back, but I don't really foresee that happening. So I don't know who's actually piloting it, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so after the part where Rey is running with the lightsaber, they directly cut to Kylo Ren. And he has his lightsaber kind of like menacing, you know, and it looks super scary. I like how his lightsaber looks like it's almost out of control. Like, all the energy can barely be contained because it's so shaky, you know. And that, I think, is super reflective of his character that he has all this power and all this energy but he can not contain himself and and everything so and i also love how you can see the lightsaber in his eye and you're like ooh, you know so i hope that they um show more of his character in this film and also you have to wonder you know will he give into the temptation for, for for the light side or will he go full dark side and become like a sith lord i don't know Okay, so next we have a shot where um, Luke is with R2-D2, and this was hinted at in the other movie, The Force Awakens, whenever Rey has that Jedi vision where, she, where he sees them, you know, with his hand on R2-D2 and all the flames and everything, and you see kind of in the distance a building on fire, and you wonder, you know, was that the school or the temple where 
Luke was trying to train his new Jedi and they all got destroyed, which they talked about in the first film, or is it something else? And um, they also used a really cool trailer trick where they transfer from that to where um, another shot of fire and Captain Phasma is coming out. And I'm 90% sure that those are two different scenes, but they use, you know, movie trailer magic to make it look like one. So we'll have to see about that. The next is a space battle scene with X-Wing fighters, TIE fighters, and there's these ships that kind of look like something that was in the original series. Um, they were called uh, Nebulan B uh, frigates, and they were used kind of like to transport things and everything, and it looks like they're making like a blockade. So they're definitely not, you know, fighting ships as far as I know, they're more like cargo ships. So. I don't know if they're protecting something or what the heck's going on there, but we'll have to see. Okay, so finally, we have the last scene where Luke is standing in the entrance of the cave. And I love the frame within a frame shot. It's a classic. And he says the line here, it's time for the Jedi to end. It's time for the Jedi to end. And as a collective audience, we're all like, no, you know, but um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, you know, if he is so bitter and so sad about losing all of his students that he's just like, forget it, I give up. Or what's going to happen. Okay, so I also want to talk about what is said in the trailer. It's kind of like super spaced out, so I kind of want to talk about it all at once. Um, Luke is training Ray, and he says, you know, breathe, just breathe what do you see? And Ray says, light, darkness, the balance. And then Luke says to her, it's so much bigger. So those, those, uh, you know, things that are said makes you wonder, um, what is going on here? <laughs> and of course the internet always has tons of theories. And my favorite of all of them is that they're going to be, um, introducing gray Jedi. Now, you may be wondering, what the heck is a Grey Jedi? Um, it's sort of in the expanded universe, or the EU. It's been in, like, you know, cartoons, or I should say, animation shows, uh, video games, and of course, tons of books. And they're Jedi that ride the line between light and dark. They don't fully give over to the, to the dark side. They're able to sort of keep it at bay, but at the same time, they're able to use some of the powers that is available to people on the dark side. In particular, um, it was in the show Star Wars Rebels and Knights of the Old Republic, the video game. I will be linking some articles down below that you could check out about the Grey Jedi because I'm not a super expert on them or anything, but I do think that it would be so cool if this concept is introduced in the Star Wars universe because um, Star Wars has always been about duality. It's been light or dark, good or bad, you know? And in real life, that's not really the way it is, you know? Nobody is 100% good. Nobody is 100% bad. You know, most people are actually very in the middle, <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I think with the rise of tons of anti-heroes, you know, from um, the guy from Breaking Bad to you know, Deadpool, or a whole bunch of people like that, or like, people are really into those. So, I don't know if that necessarily is going to happen, but I think that it would definitely introduce a really cool, interesting, um, new aspect of the Force. Because whenever Luke says, it's time for the Jedi to end, he may not necessarily mean it's time for everybody who uses the Force, any, like, nobody should ever use it ever again. Because you see him training Rey, so you got to wonder, you know, what is he actually thinking? Um, some people suggested that the Jedi were so wrapped up in religion, you know, they had very strict rules, you know, like they couldn't get married, and they had super strict rules. And anybody that didn't feel like following those rules were sometimes considered great Jedi. Some people think that Qui-Gon Jinn was a great Jedi, but I don't think so, just because he was always at odds with the Jedi, the, the Jedi Council. Um, maybe Luke thinks that the old ways of the Jedi is outdated. That harnessing just one side of the Force 
makes you really unbalanced and m makes you not well, you know, and that maybe they need to find a more balanced way to use the force. So something I, I found online that is really, really interesting is from the novelization of the movie The Force Awakens, and it's in the beginning of, of the book, and um, it's a poem about light and dark and gray. So let me read it to you. First comes the day, then comes the night. After the darkness shines through the light, the difference, they say, is only made right by resolving of gray through refined Jedi sight. And um, this is from the Journal of Willis, and it was in one of the original screenplays that George Lucas made. So, you know, it's not totally crazy non-canon stuff. I mean, this is legit. Um, I think people are pretty warranted when it went to thinking that this might be the direction that the new Star Wars movie go. So, uh, let me know down below what do you think? Do you think that the Grey Jedi are totally crazy and only for weird books, or do you think they might actually go in this direction? Um, and what are you going to do to celebrate May the 4th Be With You Day? Are you going to watch the movies? Are you going to hang out and play some of, some of the toys? <laughs> or what? So, so alright. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, let me know if you have any video suggestions down below. Alright, bye bye for now.